When was the last time you saw a coffee cup on the chair lift? Probably Five yesterday. Nine. We're just getting up to Brighton Resort at about noon today, uh, which is perfect because I needed to sleep in anyway. But yeah, here we are, Brighton Resort, just snowed. Website says 23 inches. Who knows what that means? Not really a numbers person. But um, we're gonna do some boarding. Myself, Method Crew, and Seth Hewitt on the end over there. And uh, it's a leisure day. It's just magic. It's like this feeling like when you watch like, you know, a Disney movie when you're a kid, like it's like pixie dust and like magic wands. Snowboard is a magic wand. And it's just like straight, like when it's good, you feel like you're casting spells, you know, Alakazam style. <laughs> Gotta part ways with this at the top. Oh, it's so crazy out here today. <laughs> oh wow, dude. So let's go to the orange cliff. Yeah. So right down here, stay on top and we'll stop on these cliffs. Whoa! Oh wow. All right, you good? Dropping. Huh. Oh my God. Yeah, that still shot might be good. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of good days this year, like up here. And these are like the days because you're, you know, sort of where you live and go up here with no expectations really and you just ride. Driving. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Even like the word style, like it's hard hearing that over and over again. Yeah, we get it, style, style. What does it mean though, you know? People say, oh yeah, style. Like everyone has style, but it's their own style. It's not like one style is better than any other. The style is like, you know, possibly being, being able to like see somebody's silhouette and know who it is, you know? Like you don't have to like really see like the name tag or something. I spent many years cut off from like everything around me because you're so hell bent on whatever you're doing, thinking 20 feet ahead, 20 steps ahead. You miss out on all the stuff that's happening now. I still don't like that sometimes, but I'm trying to be better about it. It's just like enjoying, having fun. You can't have fun like when you're 20 steps ahead. Fun doesn't work like that. Like today, I'm not really like biting to jump off anything crazy i just it's nice like kind of just seeing where conversations go throughout the mountain you know That was so fun. Oh! Looks like someone might have put it in. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> oh! Um, and I was I skied for like three years before I snowboarded. My parents were like. Or my dad would take me every once in a while, but I was always like kind of whatever about it. And then I remember one day we were on the chairlift at Stowe, Vermont, 
on a family trip and out of the out of the woods comes a snowboarder jumps over a bush right under the chairlift and as soon as i saw that i was like oh yeah i'm gonna do that like nothing had affected me like that Sorry. um up until that time so it's kind of the perfect tool because like it's infinite like some things can only get a certain level but this thing like you can go slow and carve and shade and like like just paint around yeah. or you can go straight and take off and fly you know you can get all these different feelings out of it like guitar too like sit down on the acoustic and even if it's an acoustic you can still get kind of heavy on it but you can also get like really nice and light I remember being on the chairlift and like Lucas Magoon's like kind of like cruising through the park and he's got this big ass jacket on like past his knees and he's kind of just like waddling around and he hits this box he does a nose nose press tail tap nose press tail tap no front flip out of the box and we were like directly above him for some reason my two most potent moments on uh, the snowboard were seeing it for the first time at Silvermont like I was saying before the snowboarder jumps down over a bush and then with Lucas like these two moments like I'll never forget these moments like like where you're just like what like you turn around and you're like need to see more because you're like yeah it's so cool go into my home this is where I live typical scene walk in quiet dogs <laughs> but they're very serious guard dogs this is Alexa, Nyama, Teo, and Howard. They're the primary residents of the house. So in our living room, there's many things. This is a piano for anyone that doesn't know. And uh, we have to be careful about playing it, but usually when we play, we play like this. <laughs> This is the spiritual corner where you go if you gotta like, you know, cast spells or uh, maybe clear up the air as such. And, um, oh yeah, here's a spoon. This spoon was created by Mr. Johnny O'Connor and it's called the Spoon of Doom. And he whittled this out of a skateboard and it is a fully functioning spoon. A couple years ago, I was at Squaw Valley for uh, just a ride one day and it ended up being a day that was uh, Noah Selastnik Memorial Service. And they had a box of all his stuff and knives and watches and stuff. And they were like, take, take whatever you want. You know, so I grabbed this watch, which at the time didn't work. And this is a watch that Noah, Noah would put on his snowboard pants and uh, hang from a belt loop. Rolled that day, got to ride with John Cardiel and like Brian Gucci and like uh, a bunch of the people that Noah used to ride with that were there for the memorial service. Went back to Salt Lake for a couple months and I remember I was going back to Tahoe so I was like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna pack this watch just because it'd be nice to like get it back to like where it's from. And uh, so I put it on my snowboard pants and I go to Boreal that day and I'm on the chairlift on the first run at Boreal and I look down and this watch that did not work, no sign of life, is ticking. So I thought that was a cool story. And it ticked and it worked for just like that one chairlift. And then when I was at the top, I went down, not working again. It hasn't worked since, but I thought that was really interesting. Like brought this thing back to Tahoe, randomly starts working on the Boreal chairlift. And uh, so now I got like the kind of set here with Noah and the watch and everything's blue. So that's pretty cool. This is uh, Naima. She got third place at the Scalf World Tour. This is Blue Mouse. I found this piece of wood that looked exactly like this. There was a little stump that I sawed off, but I, I saw it at, in the woods at Brighton at the Bone Zone. And I was like, oh damn, that looks like a mouse. So obviously I brought it home and I painted it as a Blue Mouse. You'll, you'll see Blue Mouse's counterpart. This is like the yin of a yang piece that you'll see in a second. This is Blue Mouse's counterpart, Snake. And this is also a piece of wood from up at Brighton 
that I found, and I was like, oh, that looks like a snake or a rifle. I chose snake, way more powerful than a rifle. So blue mouse and snake, when they get together, it's a bloodbath. Um, but you know, yin and yang, like I said. And this is the basement. This is kind of where like I've retreated to do like some of my work. Just clean this whole zone up today, just to like get going. But usually it's like papers everywhere. Tyler Lynch made this for me a couple years ago. Uh, Vulcan piece. This is like an early painting that I did that I'm so happy that I still have. I'm still not a good painter, but I really enjoy it, and that's really all I care about. This is where down here I'm kind of like always working on like got like poetry stuff that I'm working on, some drawings and stuff. And I used to love the Power Rangers growing up. But yeah, I just like I'm trying to be more organized with my stuff, and I got a typewriter and I'll type shit and draw stuff and just get it into the three ring notebook and like just so you know this is like you know all the work that I've been working on for the last like year for like the writing and poetry stuff it's nice to have like a place to like type um so this is one of my typewriters this is the electric one that I I use now because my the my other one I'll grab it and show you but they're both out of ink right now so I'm like in the middle of the winter and I'm like okay no typing until I order some more ribbons for some ink but it just this one just ran out today which i thought was funny but and i ran out of paper recently so i'm at the point where i'm like i really gotta get my shit together yeah i got some paintings that i've been working on that are just like in the garage like because there's no really where else to put them but it's like some colors and everything and like random kind of vibe it's more colors and this is that poetry book that I wrote. I have, uh, I got a bunch of copies in there. Anyone needs them, hit me up and I'll send you a copy for a price. Yeah, no, the books came out awesome. I don't know about any of the writing in them, but when it's time to do something, this is how much time you got. Yep. By the time that thing ends, we better be doing something. <laughs> Hello world! Hey Method Mag, come on in to Salt Lake City Jam Space. Join us. Or join me, yeah, as I should say. This is our room. This is where um, Salt Lake crew meets up and play some music and bounce ideas off of each other and do whatever you need to do in this place. And it's uh, kind of just a place of overall creativity and just come in here and Throw paint on the walls, throw sound on the walls, kind of just go off the wall. <laughs> yeah, right now we're just waiting for uh, waiting for Harry Hagen and Mikey LeBlanc. Been playing music with those guys for like a couple months now and got a couple songs and we're just gonna jam tonight. We haven't jammed in like a couple months now because the winter just keeps going. This is the newest piece, this is Arthur Longo. And uh, for me it was nice just because like we were just jamming, and Arthur was in here and just painted while we were jamming, and I find that in here it's really, it's nice seeing someone paint, and I think I've painted before while other people are, are jamming, and you really can, it's different than listening to like the radio or your music, like when you're doing stuff, cause like, it's like real raw energy in the room. So yeah, this one, uh, I love how this one came out. We didn't have that much paint, but Arthur made it happen. I will come in here on my own if I'm gonna paint, but otherwise uh, I'll be hitting people up, trying to get some other people in. And there's a million people to jam with. Honestly, sometimes too many people to jam with. You're like, damn, what a thing, what a problem to have. Mikey, on my way. How's the lyric going on? Um, you said, is that it? Yeah. And I'm on my way. You said, oh, I swear, and I'm on my way. You said, oh, I swear, and I'm on my way. 
We don't have a name yet. We're just gonna be elusive forever. That might have been the best we ever played that. <laughs> that one. Damn. I seriously think that was the best that we ever played that one. Yeah, that was sick. This is my sign off. Thanks for coming to the jam space. We're aliens. And we're going to space tomorrow on a flight that's taking off at 8 a.m. And uh, thank you for joining us here in beautiful, warm, sunny, humid, Arid Salt Lake City. Oh shit! Oh. <laughs>